Did you have something to tell them? We love you guys. And subscribe to the channel. Uh-huh. And... But no, 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 not that. It was something else you had to tell them. Something important, right? Yes. Something to do with... News? Yes, what kind of news? Well... Is it fake news? Uh... <laughs> the light is below. Hello, today... Oh, it's a UFO! Okay then. <laughs> Hello dear friends. Hi, Welcome dear back friends. to the channel. Welcome back to this channel. We are continuing with our Congo versus US series. Let's say US. Just teasing. And so today we are talking about raising children. All things children. What's the difference? Congo versus USA. Yes. In raising children. If you want to find out what the difference is, keep watching all the way to the end. with pregnancy announcements and births, shall we? Okay. Okay, so what's the difference though? You go ahead. Uh, so pregnancy, uh -huh. pregnancy and birth. Uh -huh. So in the US, uh, birth and that, or pregnancy announcement, like uh, you want to wait just a little bit usually. I think most people wait until they're through. I think it's about 12 weeks. So yeah, three months. just in case there's yeah. a miscarriage or something, right. they, mm -hmm. they want to wait just mm -hmm. a little bit uh, before they announce. Uh, but then it's game on. You've got a, what's it called? Pregnancy what? announcement? I don't know which. which yes, what yeah, you yeah, like a friends and family first, obviously That's family. True. Yeah, close, close people first, and then announcing it from there out. Facebook, yeah. Instagram, yeah. Twitter. Uh, <laughs> what's the other one? Snapchat, uh, Instagram girl. I did say Instagram. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Oh, so should I answer what's the difference? Sure. Uh, yeah. Okay. What, how, yeah. How is it in Congo? So in Congo and a lot of African nations, you don't say anything Ooh. at all. It's supposed to be a secret until like you start showing and you still kind of don't tell people. You kind of just let people see your bump and then know that you're pregnant. Um, I understand why it's done and I also understand why the U.S. does like people here do it how they do it. Announce it, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I know back home, I, not everybody, but majority believe that you can't just trust everybody with that type of information okay. and you don't know what their heart's motives is for you and the well-being of your child. So okay. you just you are tight lip, you don't say anything. Okay. So that's like a major difference. Right. Uh, back home. So yeah. I know another big thing is when you find out the gender. Mm -hmm. Now in the US, some people choose to find out the gender ahead with an ultrasound, and some choose not to and wait and be surprised at the birth. Mm -hmm. uh, and a lot of people want to find out so they can decorate the room, get the right color clothing, plan for a boy or a girl, mm -hmm. and then they want to have a big gender reveal, reveal yeah. party. That's the thing these days. They go all out with the gender mm -hmm. reveal. Mm -hmm. Big surprise, boy oh, or girl. Speaking of, if you haven't watched our gender reveal, we will link it up somewhere here on Jory's side. I think it's on your side, babe, up here. <laughs> okay, so yeah, that's the US side. There's a big gender reveal. You want to find out the gender of the baby. Mm -hmm. How about Congo? Okay, so there's no such thing. Like I said, you keep, oh, like I, like <laughs> you just, there, I, again, this is 2019. Things are changing and things probably have changed. But from what I remember, there was not a lot of that going on. So, okay. uh, like, really big difference. Um, so, with the oh, baby shower here, it's customary that. A close friend or relative of the family, like of the bride, mm -hmm. close friend or relative of the not bride, wife. The wife. She is a well. Was a bride, yeah. yeah. Of the of the wife. <laughs> she is the bride. Would, the pregnant mom, mm -hmm. her best friend or close relative mm -hmm. sister or something would plan the baby shower for her. Um, she would 
figure out what she wants, contact all the friends and everyone you want there, find a venue, etc., 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 plan this whole big deal. Um, I think sometimes, yeah, there's usually like registries, mm -hmm, a baby registry mm -hmm. at a store, maybe a few stores where the couple goes and puts in what they want for the baby. Mm -hmm. Mostly it's the wife the choosing wife. what she wants for the baby. Because <laughs> let's be honest, how many guys really care about onesies? <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, so there's that going on with the baby shower. That's right. had so in Congo, it's a little different. Again, this is from what I remember. It could be someone else's experience, and this is 2019 going to 2020, praise the Lord. Okay, so normally there's not a lot of what we call baby showers. A lot of the showering of the gifts and so forth is done after the child is born. Uh -huh. okay. Then you have like cooking, um, people bringing gifts for the child, and um, just almost like a party, but not a party, uh, unofficial party, like where you just bring gifts, you okay. cook, and after you, the you, fact. After the fact, it's, okay. it's not before. Is it, um, so like I know for the baby shower here, it's mostly mm -hmm. women. Mm -hmm. Yes, so that leads kind of to the birthing aspect of things. So in the birth birthing, um, room. I know here the male or the, the husband, husband is yeah, present. It's usually present. Okay, yep. so back home that's not the case. The men have nothing to do with the birth of the child. <laughs> and it's not that they don't want to be there, but in our culture it's just like you don't. It's a faux pas. It's not none of your business. Right. Like it is, but it's not. It's a woman thing. So <laughs> the women of the village or the yes, women of the family. Of the family get together. Are so, there. like for yeah. my mom, I would give my mom's example because I did speak with her um, in regards to this topic. And she said that after she had my oldest brother, her, I believe her grandma and her some of her siblings and my dad's side of the family, they all came and they cooked and they took care of her, but only the women. And then the women stay mm -hmm. uh, in that situation. There's they, like a time of caring and pampering. Absolutely. So my women. mom said it was like two, three months of the oh, women wow. that, that would come in, stay with her. They would yeah. massage her belly. They would help cook. They would help clean. Hmm. They would um, take care of the baby so she can sleep. So you didn't have a lot of depression back home, I, I believe, because there was that community right they alleviated a lot of a pressure. lot of right yeah. right where here is like no give the newly parent space to enjoy their um child back home it's like let us help mm -hmm. um so yeah it's it's a difference it is to be biased i think congo does it better just saying <laughs> <laughs> parents raise it so the child is born so mm -hmm. which parent raises the child right or the so children? In the, yeah so in the u.s i know years ago it was traditional the woman would raise the children mm -hmm. and there's probably still a slight bend that way i think so but um it's shared quite a bit these mm -hmm. days you might have two working parents so one is doing something in the morning the other is doing something in the evening right or they the kids are dropped somewhere and the parents both go to work and then um picked up later but uh yeah it can be shared it can right. be more shared um so back home it's majority of the time and again my experiences the woman stayed home and took care of the household especially in the villages like if you as a woman wanted like had a business or wanted to help with the income of the family when you went to the marketplace to like sell your crops or um, pastries then you would bring your children with you mm -hmm. but for majority of the time the mama does the raising of the children right okay? right <laughs> yeah dad brings in the money then, that's huh? right that's it that's it Doesn't um, raise the kids at all. no so that's kind of it's i think it's kind of similar here mm -hmm. for um for some people, so it's not like it's a huge difference where women can't, it's not like they can't go to work. It's just like those gender roles are filled in pretty, I think pretty organically. Okay, yeah. yeah. And, and I, like I think about my parents in, our, mm -hmm. in my situation growing up, uh, my mom was the one that raised us and we were homeschooled. So mom was raising us, homeschooling us. Mm -hmm. And now you're homeschooling our kids and that's huge. You know, mm -hmm. that takes a lot of time. Mm -hmm. um, so, so for her, then when we got to like teen years, then she went and went work. back to work. Yeah. And so then they were both working when we were old enough to kind of care for ourselves. Right. Uh, so that's, that's an option for a lot of families too. 
uh, seems like um, the raising of the children happens a lot in school or in, in other places. Yeah. Whereas it seems, you know, it's been more like a time thing, a change in, in time that's what happened in the US. That? So like years ago, it would have been more the mom raising the children. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think as, you know, we've gone through different changes in the US with the industrial age and mm -hmm. with the technology age and all these things, it's shifted very much away from the children being raised in the home. Mm -hmm. Now they're at school eight hours a day and you know, so that the parents can keep working. They may be in a daycare or an after school program and you have to find what works for you, obviously. Mm -hmm. And it's not always uh, quantity over quality. Sometimes right. quality is where it counts. You, when right. you see them, you're inputting what you need to, you're making sure you're giving the affection and the training that you need to. Uh, but there's definitely been a shift away from, uh, you know, a real home-based thing. Well, like in Congo, I mean, I went to public school, mm -hmm. so like, but I find it, which will, that's a whole different video mm, on, on uh, school. schooling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that makes a huge difference too because the, on who's the how, raising. yeah, because even though we went to school, there were still some things in place okay. to help us stay in line. Okay. So, we'll, anyway, be on the lookout for that <laughs> yeah. video. Yeah, so forms of discipline mm -hmm. uh, from USA versus Congo. Uh, here, mm -hmm. um, the discipline, and, and my experience was a little different than probably the mainstream. Mm -hmm. uh, in, my, in the house I grew up in, um, there was fairly strict discipline. Mm -hmm. uh, our parents expected good behavior out of us, and if we didn't behave well, there were consequences. And the ultimate consequence being a spanking. What? <laughs> so, Why do people get spanked? <laughs> this one did. <laughs> So uh, they had a, a little wooden <laughs> paddle, uh -huh. and you knew that if you you did something that was direct disobedience or belligerence or total disrespect to to the parents, something that was blatant, mm -hmm. you would get spanked. Mm -hmm. uh, otherwise, there were other other means, you know, taking something away, a privilege, or. Uh, my parents really didn't do a lot of timeouts. Okay, the reason why I say white people get spanking is because it's a stereotype that a lot of people believe that white people or white children aren't spanked. And yeah, actually it was one of the questions that my dad asked you. I don't know if you remember when you guys met, was like, did your parents spank you? Oh, believe me, I got my high tan. <laughs> Mom kept the paddle in a drawer in the kitchen, <laughs> and the, the tradition was um, they would they would send us to the pantry, mm -hmm. and we would wait in the pantry with the door closed. Uh -huh. And um, so uh, that would give you know mom or dad a chance to think about what had gone on and how they wanted to handle it, and then. Before you knew it, you hear that drawer, Open. and you're like, oh no. <laughs> <laughs> yep, if you had done wrong, you could rest assured you would get disciplined for it. And it was it was fairly rare. I mean, it's not like we were getting spanked all the time. It was reserved for really mm -hmm. harsh things mm -hmm. that we had done, real blatant offenses of some kind. Wow. But a lot of families now, there's in the US, there's this uh, mentality of, you know, what are the kids' feelings, and you know, we need to consider what their feelings are, and and you know, no spanking, maybe a timeout, and you know, bribing with candy, things like this. And I I think that leads down a real dangerous path where there's not enforcement in discipline. But anyway, that's kind of the U.S. It's softened so much. Um, that it's almost like the kids are in control sometimes. Hmm. Interesting. Geez, I wish um, I grew up American. <laughs> <laughs> A lot of what I'm gonna talk about is what happened back home. Um, so like for me, it was no such thing as like a warning. So like, <laughs> and if you're African and you're watching this, if you're <laughs> if you were raised by African parents, so um, if you're you came from an African background, if you said something that could be understood or seen as, or perceived as disrespect, you have like two seconds to get up and run. <laughs> because you don't get a you warning. Don't get a warning. Of, oh, go in the pantry for a second mm -hmm. and think about what they you did. They don't just give you a lecture or oh, talking to Oh no, it was like one, of, and 
Man, African parents are quick. <laughs> Dang, how'd you do that so fast? That like, Wakanda slap. <laughs> Wakanda, no. Um, yeah, so you, you say something and like, if you get a look from your parents, I tell you, run. I mean, run. Because the next thing you know, you'll probably be laying on the floor because it'd be like just a wham, like a, Ooh. like a, what do you call it? Backhand. Backhand slap. <laughs> it was a lot of that. Um, so like, yeah, and punishments came in all sorts of form. I remember like getting in the corner, like, so if we were disrespectful towards somebody or said something we shouldn't have said, so like we had to go in the corner and that means you turn around, you face the corner for like hours on end. The other one is where you had to like get on your knees with your hands up. I mean, this is military style, okay? <laughs> hands on your, uh, hands up and you're on your knees for a long period of time. And obviously like spankings, like it's not like, oh, it's just spanking on your bottoms. No, you're getting like whooped. Beat down. Yeah. And so in the US, it will be perceived as, oh, that's child abuse. But I always say that I think we're turned out just fine <laughs> so do you want to go first sure or? that's okay. fine so here children have a prominent place mm -hmm. they're given a lot of respect from a very young age mm -hmm. and treated like little princes and princesses mm -hmm. and uh, so I'm not sure how else to say it exactly um, it depends on the household as well, mm -hmm. you know, what's expected of the children, mm -hmm. but they're given a lot of preference. Yeah. Uh, what they want, what they feel, mm -hmm. you know, their needs and desires, and, and probably more than I would than I would say is good. Mm -hmm. um, and, and my family was actually a little more, I think, strict. I mean, we, my, my brothers and I got a lot of nice things. Mm -hmm. um, but I don't think my parents were all about, oh, what What do you feel? What do you want? You know, like, <laughs> oh, whatever to make you happy. happy right? No, they were, they were about um, getting the right behavior mm -hmm. and understanding that, you know, we had to turn out a certain way right. that was respectful to authority. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, there's definitely that bend where it's like the child is considered to the utmost and what they want. So like, was there a difference in like, your eldest sibling to you like so well, first of all what's the age gap right so we're all very that? close in age my mm -hmm. older brother is less than a year older than me almost mm -hmm. exactly a year and then my younger brothers are about two years younger than me mm -hmm. and actually it's less than two years between them and mm -hmm. me uh, so we're all within about three years of each other okay um, so I guess there, I don't think there was a huge difference in how they handled discipline between the four of us because we were basically being raised simultaneously. Right, so could like your oldest sibling like slap you with the, with the permission of your, oh, your no. parents? Okay. No. Okay. No. No, there was no, there was no disciplining by my brother. By your brother. He wishes. <laughs> <laughs> in fact, I remember one day that, uh, I think it was probably the, no, we, we had a fight over it because there was one day we were getting close to teen years mm -hmm. and my older brother, my mom was going somewhere, we were probably young teens if I remember, and she had said that my older brother would be in charge while she was gone. Mm -hmm. And he tried to like kind of hold it over me, you know, and make me do something and I was like, no, <laughs> that, I'm not going to do something ridiculous just because mom put you in charge. It's not so you can... <laughs> push me around. You know, I didn't like that at all. You're not even a year older than me. Jory's <laughs> bad. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm just teasing you that. I don't even remember what it was, but we had a disagreement. Goodness. Okay, so uh, the difference is, there's a stark difference. So, like Jory said here, children are given preference, like back home, like you love your children but it's like what they want doesn't really matter <laughs> like you're trying to survive so like just raising them in the ways of the lord making sure they're fed and clothed like that's it mm. like feelings we're feelings right <laughs> you got food in your belly you got a roof over your head Keep you it are loved that's it so like yeah it wasn't these a lot of these emotional things and um so yeah they knew their place but they dare not cross an adult. So like mm. I asked Jory about his siblings is because for us, um, my eldest, um, older brother. my older brothers, um, my sister, like if I was out of line, 
they had every authority because mm -hmm. they were older to like to discipline to like discipline me yeah. so you're not only being disciplined by your parents but you're also being corrected by your sibling your older siblings and you said aunts and uncles too oh yeah absolutely yeah. aunts and uncles so like if mm -hmm. yeah my aunt and uncles like disciplined us all the time mm -hmm. so it wasn't like oh you better not hit my child like like it is right. here yeah it's like that whole thing of it takes a village to raise a child mm -hmm. every single person in the family is like looking to make sure the well-being of that child is like looked after mm -hmm. making sure that the children or the child's growing up like he or she should right and if they're out of line and if your tantine which is aunt or your tonton your uncle is around oh best believe you'll get slapped or corrected <laughs> somehow and then when your mom comes and they tell them you were out of line your mom Round might even two. say exactly okay. so respect is such like a big deal right back home even right you know, towards somebody who's like a year or you Right, know, that's something nine. that surprised me mm -hmm. when, I've been, when I met Bename, is that it, if your sibling is older than you by a minute, <laughs> you owe them the respect of an adult. Yeah. You will respect them like they're an adult mm -hmm. over you. Yep. Yeah. You, you call them differently by name. Oh yeah, that's yeah. right. So like, um, my older brother's name is Makabu, mm. but we would, I, I dare not address them as makabu. Like now I might say just to be like, to get them to laugh. I might say adults. either joking, yeah. even now that I'm an adult, but yeah. I, like I still call them yapapi. So anyone that's older than you, you put ya in front of their so name. So papi was his like nick nickname. nickname. Yeah. Or so you can say ya makabu. Ya makabu. Yeah. Or uh, so Eddie. then my second eldest is Eddie. So I dare not call him Eddie or Kabasele is yeah. ya Eddie. So that's take a village to raise a child. Now, if neighbors, I know here, like your neighbors aren't to like to correct like your you guys like if they right. saw you playing outside and you misbehave they couldn't like grab you by the ear oh and say, no hey, yeah. parents would get heated here yeah yeah That's it's, a <laughs> it's different here too i'm not yeah. i'm not sure how to explain it like you don't know what might be going on if someone's trying to grab your kid you know mm, that's true yeah. yeah back home um from what i remember it's very community based like you right. knew your neighbor you didn't know your neighbor's business but you knew them well enough to like trust them right with your children so like if <clears throat> I'm out of town or went shopping and Arabella, my daughter and Javen were to stay home and uh, Jory was at work and instead of them like behaving they were doing like throwing things or like um, messing with the dogs or somebody's yard like my neighbors back home would probably like grab them by the ear and say let's mar and march them home or like um, exactly <laughs> and then when your parents came home they dealt with you again it was like this mutual respect amongst adult like I look out for your children you look out for mine mm -hmm. and it was like unspoken it was just right. the right thing to do must have been a lot of people were parenting under the same paradigm I think so so they they kind of all understood we're all trying to raise our kids this way, this way so we can yep. help each other out right and here too you don't know your neighbors like you right. know them but you don't know them like right. I wouldn't just trust any neighbor to like stay with my my children right so that's another paradigm of mm -hmm. like how it takes a village to raise a child I don't mm. guys thank you for all the love and support um please feel free to like comment subscribe and share our videos with some um of your friends are going with that dear friends keep, keep looking up yes keep looking up